Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Only on Bloomberg Quint. Welcome back. You're watching Indian Open with us on Bloomberg Quinn. Let's do a check as to what the Asian markets are doing this morning. Uh, Nikkei is trading with gains of nearly 27 points. Hang Seng is trading quite firmly in the green, up almost 400 points. And uh, let's do a check for uh, SGX Nifty, which is indicating mild bit of downtick in today's session. SGX Nifty currently quoting somewhere about 10,336. Before we get to the FNO queues, if we could just also pull up the Dow futures, I think they are indicating uh, some bit of correction to come by after that news came in yesterday that there could be additional tariff for, on China and back of which we've seen some correction coming in for Dow futures which are currently trading with cuts of 300 points. But back home yesterday was a great, great session. Uh, there was a bout of short covering which was seen for Nifty futures, also the bank Nifty futures. Let's check what sort of cues we are getting from the derivative space and uh, Agam Vakil joins us to take us through the same. Hi Agam, good morning. Good morning Navneeta. As we all know, it's been a great day of trade yesterday considering we saw the Nifty climbed as much as 200 points and as it's evident in the change in open interest we've seen a lot of short covering so the Nifty saw about near 3% decline in OI similarly the Nifty Bank also saw a substantial decline in open interest of as much as nearly 12% uh, and as one, one might expect we've seen the volatility index come off to a quite an extent in fact now below the mark of 15 and what does it mean for the Nifty put call ratio well back about the mark of 1.4 coming down to how we've seen changes in open interest, uh, a lot of unwinding in the uh, 10,200 call which had been written, remember, just a few days ago and a lot of writing in the 10,200 put. So as you can see uh, and indicated here. Uh, in terms of stocks, of course, we are watching out for something like uh, Reliance Communications, a lot of accumulation in open interest and similarly more longs building in other counters like Sriram Transport Finance as well. Do remember there was a broad based rally and gains across the board. So we'll have to wait and watch whether or not that sustains, but at least as per the indications of the SGX Nifty, as you've already pointed out, we're not necessarily looking at a great start. Thanks, Agam, for bringing those cues, and we'll wait and watch whether there are more legs to the rally that we saw in yesterday's session. Remember, as Agam highlighted, there was a lot of put writing that was seen around the mark of 10,200, 300, which is telling you that somewhere the base is being now formed around the mark of 10,250. Another positive takeaway that the volatility fell significantly. Remember, throughout the February March series, India Wix has been at elevated levels. So any sort of correction for India Wix will definitely be a very comforting sign for the bulls. But but let's bring in our guest on board. Avinash Gorakshakar, Head of Research at Joinder Capital Services, joins us on the show now. Hi, Avinash. Good morning and thanks a lot for coming by to our studio. Um, well, yesterday's rally was more got to do with global queues. And second, uh, there was no negative surprise coming in from RBI policy. Yeah. In fact, change of stance was uh, pretty much, you know, uh, taken positively by the market. And hence, the rally was seen in the PSU banking space. I want to start off my... Uh, question with the PSU banking space, there was a bout of short covering, but do you think now is the time that when RBI has taken steps, bond yields are cooling off, that one can look to buy into these banks? I think uh, clearly yesterday's RBI policy was a positive surprise in terms of the, you know, the commentary from the RBI governor. I think clearly what the market was expecting was a hawkish commentary, but I think what came out was definitely quite positive. And I think, uh, you know, all said and done, uh, my sense is I think frontline banks like SBI, Bank of Baroda, or for that reason, uh, you know, some uh, banks like Union Bank could possibly see a little bit of, uh, you know, continuation of the uptrend which we saw yesterday. And I think clearly uh, in terms of the asset quality stress plus the kind of provisioning norms which have been announced, I think it's going to make it slightly easier for these banks. But yes, I think uh, at these levels, uh, if one were to take a call on the PA PSU banks, I think it's better to, you know, place your bets on the larger cap banks rather than the smaller PSU banks, where I believe, you know, the asset quality stress has largely been taken out uh, by, uh, you know, provisioning provisions made by these banks. So, so uh, as of now, I think uh, avoidable would be the smaller PSU banks, but the larger frontline PSU banks like SBI, Bank of Baroda would definitely uh, be a buy on decline. And do you also think that all the negative news for ICICI banks now is priced in because uh, the loan which was given to Videocon, I think that's already been provided as NPAs now. 
No, I think clearly, uh, you know, in terms of the financial numbers, Navneet, uh, the provisioning may have been done, but I think still a lot of, uh, you know, controversies uh, range from the kind of transactions which have happened, especially uh, related to the Videocon group. So I think clearly the markets would wait for some sort of clarity uh, and uh, maybe a clean sheet given to the, uh, you know, CMD and then probably... But do valuations excite you? I think price to book is somewhere about one and a half times per FI90. I think valuations definitely uh, look attractive, longer term wise, because, you know, clearly this is not a smaller bank and obviously uh, uh, you know once the uh, you know the air uh, settles down as far as the you know the transaction with videocon is concerned i think clearly the downside seems to be limited but yes i think uh, you know this is a stock for high risk takers and clearly uh, the kind of events which might unfold over the next one or two quarters uh, would obviously you know be very much dependent on the sentiment for this stock mm. avinash uh, good morning um, a uh, stock that will clearly be in focus today would be Interglobe Aviation for more than one yeah. reasons as well. Now, are you happy that they've opted out of the race or do you believe uh, adding Air India in whichever shape and form would have only added muscle and therefore uh, would have been positive? No, in fact, Neeraj, uh, this news is definitely positive for uh, Indigo. I would believe that, you know, taking over the entire airline uh, with the kind of uh, debt on the balance sheet would have been a little more difficult for them to turn around this business. And I think very clearly uh, in terms of the productivity matrix, I think Air India definitely lags behind in terms of other airline companies primarily because they have a very large employee base, a very large debt burden. So I think clearly what came out today from uh, the Indigo management was very clear. They wanted to only look at the international operations and which are not part of this deal. Mm. So I think uh, I would believe that the stock should actually take a strong kind of opening. The markets would obviously be happy because a lot of controversies were uh, typically spoken as to how this uh, entire transaction would be funded, what kind of debt burden would come on Indigo. So I think now this is very clear. Uh, you know, the deal was entirely for the international operations and which was not part of the deal. Okay, so you take that positively. I would, I would see because the market. So you would buy it, is my question, because the stock is trading at life highs. I would it's still, not cheap. Yeah, I would, I would say that yes. I mean, despite the fact that the stock is not, uh, you know, cheap. If you look at the air traffic growth and the kind of opportunity uh, from the tier two, tier three kind of cities, especially from the Udan initiative, uh, which the government has announced, I think uh, over the next say couple of years, this is definitely a stock which can uh, deliver sound returns. And you know, one should actually buy on declines rather than you know, uh, you know, buying it on the peaks. Okay, so why Interglobe Aviation? Why not SpiceJet? Uh, I would believe that, uh, you know, in terms of the geographical mix of the aircrafts and in terms of the operational efficiency, I think clearly I would uh, uh, obviously try to more, uh, be bet on Indigo for the simple reason that, you know, their operating metrics are much better than SpiceJet. And clearly in terms of uh, uh, the beta factor, I would say that, you know, it's a more matured kind of uh, company rather than SpiceJet. So to that extent, market should obviously give it a more significant premium compared to SpiceJet. Okay, that's the view coming on the aviation space and as Neeraj highlighted, the stock's actually trading around the old time high level. So definitely watch out whether there can be further gains seen for Interglobe Aviation or not in today's session. Yesterday, the stock was up nearly 4.5%. But besides this, there are a whole host of other stocks that we will be watching out for when the market opens today. And our research team is ready to take us through the same. There is some acquisition by HCL, some stocks which, are, uh, which will be uh, in news. Uh, so we'll see how the opening for those uh, stocks also panned out. Uh, good morning to three of you. Uh, let me start off with the stocks in news today. Shraddha, uh, which are the stocks that you're watching out for? And Navneet, starting off with Indian Oil, which has bought a 17% stake in a Oman uh, oil field for $329 million. That apart, uh, lenders of Amtec Auto have also approved a resolution plan that was submitted by uh, Liberty House. Some uh, Q4 updates coming in from Shobha, where uh, new sales volumes are up by a rupees 40% for the quarter. Uh, but uh, sales value has grown by slightly lower 30 percent that's because price realizations have fallen. Magma Fincorp's 500 crore QIP opened yesterday. The floor price has been set at 154.5 per share. Uh, that's about 5 to 6 percent discount to yesterday's closing price. Sona Koyo promoter uh, JT KT Corp uh, is also proposing to sell 1.8 percent stake via an offer for sale today. Floor price again set at, a, set at a discount to yesterday's closing price set at 85 rupees versus uh, the closing price of about 98 yesterday. Maj Tesco has won a three-year uh, contract deal from a tier one insurer. Kridan Infra has won orders worth 134 crores. And on the back of bulk deals, uh, you have Avat Sugar, where the promoter 
Bronson Traders has uh, hiked their stake by about half a percent, so a couple of smaller names. All right, we'll be watching out for all these counters. And Agam, HCL, a small acquisition, but brokerages seem to be fine with it. Yes, absolutely, uh, because there's no uh, you know material impact on the revenues or the for that matter profitability. But uh, so they have gone ahead and acquired uh, C3I Solutions. That's the U.S. based wholly on subsidiary of Merck. That's the uh, and uh, you know this company particularly that C3I Solutions it specializes in multi-channel customer engagement and it has expertise in clinical pharmacovigilance as well as sales support. Now uh, the, the company has been acquired for a sum of around 60 million dollars. It does have annual revenues of around 200 million dollars which keeps fluctuating around that mark but in terms of profitability its EBITDA is not very high so its EBITDA margin standard around uh, you know less than six percent. Now with respect to the contribution of C3I to HCL Technologies overall revenues it could largely be less than 3%. And again, when it comes to EBITDA, uh, you know, it could be large, less than even 1%. So uh, no material change in terms of earnings. Uh, but however, it does complement, uh, you know, HCL Technologies portfolio, considering it will bring in competencies in life sciences and CPG verticals. And uh, we have two brokerages giving their calls on HCL Technologies. The first one is Morgan Stanley. They retain their, uh, you know, our overweight rating with the price target of 1060 and they do say it complements uh, HCL Tech's BPO services. However, no material impact on earnings, and we have credit suites on HCL Technologies. They retain their outperform with a price target of 1100 and they say that the acquisition is reasonable, but again, uh, no, not very significant to uh, HCL's overall picture. Okay, we'll be watching out how the opening for HCL Technologies pans out today. But Nikki, earnings season has kicked off with a small company. What big bang numbers from GM Breweries? Yeah, so yet again, good numbers reported by GM Breweries. Uh, if you look at the top line growth, we're looking at 11% rise at a number of 112 odd crore as compared to nearly 101 crore that we've seen mm -hmm. in the corresponding quarter. It has been a good show even in bottom line front. We're looking at a number which is almost 2.5 times higher as compared to the previous number at a number of 25 crore as compared to 10 crore in the corresponding quarter. It's been healthy performance coming in from the operational performance of the company which has risen as much as 100% at 33 crore as compared to 16.5 crores. Margins have shot up at 29.5% as compared to nearly 16.3%. Uh, separately also the company has announced dividend of at least 30% which is 3 rupees per share. It's also recommend a bonus of uh, in the ratio of 1 is to 4. Um, what goes behind the making of the numbers? Well, higher sales combined with your cost operation efficiency is what has led to good show coming in from the company. Raw material expenses as percent to your net sales have come down significantly to 61% as compared to nearly 67% that we've seen in the corresponding quarter. Other expensive expenses have also as a percent to your net sales have come down. Besides that other operational revenue has also shot up. Uh, Navneet, you know this is at a multi-quarter high uh, EBITDA margin that we're looking at the company at least two years. 29.6 nearly 30% is what we're tracking at least two years high and also if you look at the stock performance, it's been a good 145% rise that you've seen at least on a yearly basis. In fact, it's an outperform on YTD basis also. I was checking. It's up nearly 20-25%. Thank you so much, three of you, for taking us through those stocks that's, that are going to be in focus. And I'm going to take GM Breweries. Uh, Avinash, if you track this one, uh, margins at multi-quarter high. Shareholders are happy with 30% dividend and one is to f uh, four bonus. And it's not just this quarter. I remember last quarter also they posted stellar set of numbers. What's going right for them? No, I think numbers definitely uh, seem to be very solid. In fact, uh, the bigger noteworthy positive surprise has been the EBITDA margin expansion, you know, from almost 16.5% uh, to roughly 29.5%. And uh, uh, the top line growth uh, being moderate, but, uh, you know, at the operating level and at the net profit level, profits have been very significantly large. Uh, the bonus as well as the operational uh, improvement in the numbers could possibly be seen in the stock price today. And my sense is I think you could see some sort of further buying because uh, here is a company which has got a largely uh, uh, domestic brand driven business and I think which caters to the middle and the lower end of the market. So I think this is a big opportunity and I think a very niche uh, market player, uh, you know, where the market is definitely going to grow in strong numbers. Hmm. So do you like uh, GM individually or do you believe there are other plays which could be bought into Abnash? And, and which one do you like and why? 
No, I think, uh, you know, within the premium segment, I think you cannot overlook uh, something like a United Spirits. Uh, but uh, clearly within the lower end and the middle end, you know, where most of the bigger players don't operate, that is where the niche for GM breweries actually comes. So I think this is one market which could possibly grow much faster because the base is also small. And looking at the kind of EBITDA margin, Neeraj, this business definitely looks extremely profitable, which I think none of the other, you know, premium players have actually managed to get these kind of EBITDA margins. No, so then let me ask you, I mean, for somebody who wants to put money to work in a liquor company is agnostic about whether it's a beer company or a dis you know, some other company. Would you recommend a United Spirits, Radico Khetan, United Breweries, or a GM Breweries, or one of the others? I would say that uh, you know it could be a mix of uh, the premium as well as the middle and the lower. So something like a United Spirits in the upper end, and in the lower end, you know something like a GM breweries because now it quotes come bonus. So probably even when it goes X bonus, uh, the equity of this company is not very large. So probably you'll find a lot of activity even when the stock goes X bonus. Mm, interesting. So GM breweries uh, has had a strong move really. Uh, over the last, uh, and Nikki said as over the last few years, yeah, and continue to dominate. It's quite interesting. I remember in the third quarter also, it was the first company to come out with the numbers, and they posted stellar set of numbers. And somewhere we thought numbers for the entire liquor space is going to be good, but that was that not, not the case. True. I think just in the second quarter across the board, we did see good set of numbers coming in from all the liquor players. But we'll watch out how the opening for GM Brewery pans out today. But let's also get technical check going. Raja Venkat Raman, Chief Technical Analyst at Chat Advice, is. John joining us right here in our studio. Hi Raja, good morning. Hi, Thanks good morning. a lot for coming by. Uh, um, we had a good rally yesterday and if you look at the data, it was on account of short covering and especially Bank Nifty, that's rally 1,000 points in just last seven trading sessions. Do you think there are more legs to this rally? Yeah, uh, I agree with you on that. Um, the the trigger for uh, the move in Bank Nifty has been the dovish stance taken by uh, RBI and uh, the revision in the inflation rate has actually triggered the move. But uh, if you look at the markets overall, uh, the markets overall has been in a volatile phase. And uh, every alternating day, uh, we are having different kinds of news flow. And largely, it has been triggered by the global overseas. And because of the global markets, uh, we are looking at uh, some factors which are a little bit unknown to the uh, domestic uh, players. So that's why we are having alternating uh, moves. And this is uh, resulting in um, a problem for uh, traders to take an overnight position. Yeah. And uh, if you look at day before yesterday, we had a down day. Yesterday we had an up day. And today uh, we saw SGX opening in the red, and now it's rallying back. So it is becoming a problem for uh, overnight positions. So that is why the entire market scenario is forcing us to look at uh, the situation from an intraday perspective. So if you want to uh, participate in the market, then it's best looking at the uh, overall plays from a day-to-day -day perspective. The only objective here is uh, to absorb the volatility and then uh, participate. So with a flat opening, let's say today, yeah, would today you will be a longs? flat opening because uh, also it's the weekend. But would you initiate longs in Nifty or Bank Nifty? Yes, we'll definitely be looking to initiate long in uh, Bank Nifty rather than Nifty because uh, Bank Nifty is having more favorable triggers. And if the market were to go up, Bank Nifty would be uh, one of the main reasons. So would you use options or would you go play Manila futures for the Nifty Bank today? You go with the futures. You will buy Nifty Bank futures yes. at on open today? Yeah. Okay. That's interesting, Nunit. Uh, short squeeze, but Raja is confident of there being some more upticks here on the Nifty Bank as well. What about specific stocks, Raja? Uh, if I had to ask you for a couple of ideas today, what would those be? So uh, one I would go with a little bit uh, safer bet from the FMCG pack. I would like to go in with uh, Bata. Initiate along in Bata and uh, also look at uh, Kotak Bank from the banking space because uh, it has been consolidating and yesterday it has given a fresh move. Hmm. The reason for being remaining on the long side is that uh, 10,300 was, uh, was a zone where uh, markets were actually uh, facing uh, some supply. Right. But then once that got exceeded, we are witnessing that uh, there is some positive movement. So you could use a mean reversionary approach, so to speak, and participate rather than uh, participating in a breakout mood. Mm -hmm. So that is the approach I have taken uh, for today. Okay, why Bata though? Bata has been uh, moving along uh, quite well and over the, after the recent uh, consolidation, it is uh, showing some positive uh, action and uh, it has uh, crossed uh, a range and also crossed the 20 day moving average and also given a good channel breakout from the downside. So that makes it a good positive setup.
Okay, so those are some trading strategies uh, coming from Raja for the day on uh, Bata as well as Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, but uh, let's also uh, do a check on uh, Soba. I think uh, the, the company did come out with its uh, sales volume for the fourth quarter. And uh, Avinash, this company has been surprising whenever just, you know, before releasing their quarterly numbers, they come out with the sales number. I think everything was good besides the price realization, which fell around 6%. Yeah. No, I think the markets are uh, extremely happy actually from this uh, news flow considering the fact that, uh, you know, incremental uh, numbers have been actually very strong. In fact, although realizations are down, uh, the, the key thing to watch would be obviously, uh, you know, how they sustain this uh, in overall uh, performance if you talk about FY19 because clearly in the last two uh, quarterly seasons, the management commentary has been extremely strong. They are very hopeful that new projects as well as, uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, interest cost management and the uh, you know the debt on the balance sheet is something which also they want to reduce so i would believe that yes the markets would obviously now look at the fourth quarter and hopefully the next couple of quarters in terms of the earnings traction both at the operating and at the net level because obviously top line growth is going to be quite solid considering the kind of uh, you know order book uh, wins as well as the kind of execution they have in the pipeline mm -hmm. okay um, that's uh Soba, uh, certainly 40% uh, rise, Nanit, if I'm not wrong, yeah. in the quarterly numbers. Yeah. So that should augur well for Soba developers. The other uh, stock, actually not in news, Avinash, but had a big move yesterday in trade was VIP. Suddenly in the last half an hour, it shot off from being 3-4% higher to almost 19% higher. Uh, Post-closing, maybe about a 15 or percent gain. Uh, what's happening here? And do you like the luggage space? Uh, I think clearly within the luggage space, uh, you know, they have their niche uh, in terms of uh, the kind of positioning they have. Uh, it's difficult to say what exactly uh, was the main reason for this because it's more of a domestic driven market. My sense is, you know, if they are able to manage uh, and keep a uh, right tab on their input cost management, which I think uh, in the last quarter the management hinted that they would be trying to ensure that, uh, you know, they would be controlling commodity prices, especially in terms of their input, uh, you know, components. I think that is something if uh, they do manage, then I think at least top line growth is going to grow comfortably in double digit terms. So I think, you know, it's a niche space. Uh, domestic markets are growing very, uh, you know, strongly. Uh, overall, I would believe that, you know, this is one space which would obviously benefit even from the GST impact because a lot of unorganized demand actually gets now shifted to the organized player. And there is a large unorganized market operating even as of now in this segment. Okay, that's the view coming in on VIP and the gains that you saw yesterday were just in the last half an hour. But on to our special segment, Bloomberg Edge, where today Samit Sarkar is joining us to tell us a pattern that the Bloomberg terminal has thrown up. Samit, what's in your radar today? So it's Glenmark Pharma and this is something that we have noticed on the Bloomberg. So if you see here, Glenmark Pharma in the last 19 years, that is since calendar year 2000, has given negative returns only twice, first in 2001 and then in 2005. And this is for the month of April. So in the last 19 years, 17 times in the month of April, Glenmark Pharma has given positive returns. Now if you see, since 2005, that is the last time that stock gave negative returns in the month of April, on an average, Glenmark Pharma has yielded average gains of 9% for investors in the month of April. So for the, so the now, now the last two months, that is Feb and March, had been negative for the stock. So it will be interesting to see how the stock closes in the month of April, given the past record that Glenmark Pharma has in the month of April. Can you just tell us what's the quantum of damage that has happened in February and March for Glenmark? So uh, in Feb, uh, Feb, the stock went down as much as 10% and in March, it uh, went down as much as 3%. And for year to date, if you see, the stock is down close to 5 or 6% odd. But in the month of April, so far, it has gained 5.8%. Wow. Okay. So usually as a strong April, um, for now, the start has been decent. Let's see if it lasts or no. Thanks so much for that, Samit. Well, that's just data and not necessarily a trade indicator. Let's get the trade indicator from Raja. Raja, may I request you to look at the charts of Glenmark and if there is a trade here? Yeah, uh, the charts of uh, Glenmark uh, certainly are showing some bottoming out formation. So it is uh, testing the previous lows around uh, 533. And uh, with positive news flows coming in and with the overhead resistances uh, also clearing up. So there is a potential to move uh, 40 points to the upside. And wherein uh, there is a previous gap also which is coming in play. So that could act as a resistance uh, for the up move. So if positive news flow come in and there are buying interest uh, developing, it could actually take the price higher and that is a target which I am expecting.
Okay. Shrikant Chauhan is with us, Senior Vice President for Technical Research at Kotex Securities, also on the show. Shrikant, we'll take your index view in a bit. We've just moved to some stock discussions. One of you on Glenmark Pharma, if you have, and would you buy it at the current levels? And then uh, couple that up, of, of course, with uh, your stock-specific recommendations for the day. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Neeraj, see, uh, if you see the uh, chart of uh, Glenmark Pharma, then on daily basis, the stock has formed a double bottom kind of formation. The stock has completed its correction close to uh, 530, 535. And if you see this time, uh, from the starting of this uh, financial year, we have seen a good amount of... Uh, 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 buying inflows in all uh, or inflows in all pharma companies, uh, especially like uh, uh, Lupin, Sun Pharma, uh, Dr. Eddy, they did well from their lows. Uh, we are of the view that Lupin from here also, uh, Glenmark uh, should do well from here because uh, the stock has completed its correction, but at the same time, uh, it is on the verge of breakout. So the next level to watch out for is close to 610630. Uh, on the downside, 530 is going to act as a support for it, and now the stock is very close to its support area. So. It's a great risk reward ratio for those who are like uh, taking medium term bets on pharma companies or any uh, trading stock. So it's a buy uh, from our side on Glenmark Pharma. Uh, for trading ideas, uh, we are specifically looking at those ideas where like there is a defensive kind of uh, nature because there is a good amount of news flow in the market uh, because of this uh, uh, global news flow. We like ITC and uh, here also the stock is forming some rounding bottom kind of formation. It's an interesting formation because the stock has spent a lot of time close to these levels, 255, 260. And a lot of uh, bad news flow also, uh, the stock has digested very well. So we are of the view that it is again heading for 270, 275. In the near term, in the long run, we may even see the levels of 300. On the downside, on short term basis, 255 is going to act as a support. So it's a trading idea. That's why we are t keeping 255 as a support and stop loss for it. Uh, we also like Infosys and here also the formation is quite interesting. The stock has formed a pole and flag kind of formation on weekly basis. Currently the stock is into consolidation mode but I am of the view that because there is a, a result also in the next week, uh, we are expecting stock to move to the levels of 1220, 1250. Uh, currently the stock is around 1145, 1150. Risk re reward ratio is quite favorable. With a stop loss at 1090, one can look for adding this stock to our trading portfolio. And uh, finally, we like Lupin Laboratories, where the stock has formed loop flag formation, and we are expecting 820 on the high side. Okay, so those are a couple of the trading strategies coming in from Shri Khan. He's uh, going with the defensives, actually, buy on ITC, Infi, as well as Lupin. So watch out for all these stocks. Uh, uh, I mean, I just wanted to take your view on a couple of these small cap to mid cap companies which went up in yesterday's session. The Tata Group companies have been doing well, and one of them was Tinplate. That was up 13%, and dealing surged almost 16 to 17%. No, I think uh, in terms of uh, tin plate, we have seen very strong numbers in the third quarter. And uh, since it's a Tata Steel subsidiary, we believe that, you know, in terms of the offtake, uh, the company is very well positioned. In fact, in terms of the margins also, Navneet, if you see the third quarter performance, I think uh, the uh, performance was pretty solid. And I think uh, the markets are hoping that probably the fourth quarter and the year F19 should be equally good. So uh, I think some amount of preempting buying has happened ahead of the quarter four numbers. And I think uh, we could possibly possibly see a decent volume growth as well as a margin expansion. So I think all sudden uh, the markets are looking at a better kind of earnings picture for FY18 as well as for FY19. So I think that uh, probably explains the uptick uh, what we saw in template yesterday. Okay, tin plate up almost 13 to 14% in yesterday's session. Let's see if there is any follow on buying which comes out or not. But the other space which was very, very active was the metals pack. Raja, anything from the metals pack that looks nice on chart beat and Dalco, Vedanta, Tara Steel, across the board there is buying same. So uh, from the metal space, uh, I would like to go in with uh, JSW Steel because uh, the stock has uh, been able to hold on to the selling pressure. The uh, steel tariff uh, imposition which actually induced a lot of weakness in the metal space but this stock has managed to hold out so if one were to initiate longs then uh, JSW steel would be uh, my bet to initiate a trade okay if uh, is the big question out there as well correct but by the way I, I don't know if we can bring up the Dow futures uh, right now uh, I know we was talking about it earlier as well but if we just bring up the Dow futures currently They've come off quite rapidly from the levels that they were trading at, 292 odd points down. I'm sorry, I don't know if you addressed it or not, yep. but uh, yeah, 292 points down. So 
it just goes to emphasize the point that Raja was making earlier. It's just becoming very, very difficult to take short-term positional trades or even overnight trades. Uh, Wednesday wiped out all the gains that we made in Monday and Tuesday. Yesterday we had a big bang move. Let's see with the impact of uh, the Dow futures trading the way they are and if Europe opens soft, what's the kind of trade that we have. Uh, the SGX Nifty clearly indicating a bit of a downside or a bit of a flattish start. Let me not call it a downside. Uh, but a flattish start in the session today. If Dow futures continue to sink a bit further, you don't know what will happen. Remember, Donald Trump has asked his advisors to up the ante on tariffs, and that wouldn't augur well for market sentiment. So just be wary of all of that. Uh, while you keep yesterday's rally in mind, you need to be wary of that as well. Um, Shikant, uh, the same question actually to you. Navneet is right. The metal names were the ones which actually had a big move in trade yesterday. But they would be subject to the vagaries of what happens on the global front, uh, which is why they corrected so strongly on Wednesday. How would you approach trades in any of the metal names, the base metal names? Neeraj, see, uh, metal is also one of the uh, safe havens uh, for investors because in the previous and last two years, they did extremely well. Uh, in the current year also, if we see the overall formation of all these metal companies, uh, including the chart of Bovespa, then it clearly shows that furthermore uh, gains are not ruled out. Uh, yes, uh, if we uh, take specifically uh, a view on uh, our stocks, then we like Jindal Steel and Power, uh, which is around 235-236 uh, levels. We also like JSW Steel, but Jindal Steel and Power is forming a, a very interesting formation. If you see the performance of the stock, then in the previous quarter, the stock was the one of the most outperforming stock of the entire basket of FNO. Uh, yes, uh, from highs the stock has corrected to 220, 210 levels, but now again it is regaining. Uh, 235 is the level where the stock has spent a lot of time. Uh, so I'm of the view that here the stock will spend some time, but if there is any correction, uh, and which is possible because the global markets are volatile, then close to 225, 227 the stock looks really good. But if there is a medium term view of uh, taking a positional call, then even at this price one can look for adding this stock because uh, because the stock is heading for 260, 265 in the near term. Uh, stop loss level is very nearby. With a stop loss at 220, one can certainly look for creating long position in Jindal Steel and Power. Okay. We also like Hindalco, uh, which has corrected uh, from 280 to right. 300, uh, 200 levels. And here also the stock right. is falling right. in reversal formation on a weekly basis. All right, Shrika. Now, that's a view coming in on the metal space. But we've got the pre-opening rates there on the screen. And Nifty is showing an uptick of nearly 9 to 14 points. Sensex also has opened. The pre-opening rates are suggesting an uptick of nearly 40 to 45 points. Remember, these rates will settle down by 9.08. But let's just pull up individual stock. A couple of Nifty constituents which were quite active. And Shrika was talking about Hindalco, which was the top gainer on Nifty yesterday. Let's just pull up Hindalco and see what's that doing. OK, that's down almost 1% in the pre-opening session. But uh, the banking stocks, remember, they're going to be in focus because there was a huge bounce back scene, especially for the beaten down counters. State Bank was up 4 to 5 percent. That's showing a positive tick. Pull up ICICI Bank as well. Bank of Baroda also had a stellar run. So just a uh, flat opening there. ICICI Bank is showing a negative tick of almost 3 percent in today's session. Besides that, a couple of stocks which will be in news. Uh, pull up uh, Soba. They have released their quarter four volume numbers, which were up nearly 40 percent. Soba is showing an uptick of nearly 20 percent. Okay, remember these rates will just uh, settle down in a while by 908. So we'll revisit these uh, rates for sure. And Indigo, um, Interglobe Aviation Accounter, which has been trading around its life high uh, levels. Remember, there's a news that they have said they're not interested to buy Air India operations now. And Interglobe is not showing much of uh, just about a flat opening, I'll call it. It's down six rupees at the moment. And besides that, let's just look at a couple of other uh, nifty constituents. So the, gate, the top gainer as of now, it's Grassim, which is showing an uptick of over 2%. IOC, Adani Ports, and HCL which is in focus on back of that small acquisition that they've done of $60 million. That too is showing a positive tech. And heavy weight HDFC, that's also seen gains of almost 1%. But Hindalco, as of now, seems to be the top loser on um, Nifty Neeraj. Yeah, well, Grasim seems to be the top gainer as well. Let's see if uh, those rates last. Uh, pull up Interglobe Aviation, and let's see what that one is doing in the session today. Uh, well, not too much. It's anyway trading very close to its life eyes. Uh, what, one, four, four, three, so a flattish start for Indigo. Um, GM breweries uh, should come up on your screen as well. Extremely strong numbers, 10% higher for now. Let's see if these rates stabilize. I want to pull up VIP, future lifestyle, as well as care ratings. The top movers in trade yesterday, VIP likely to start off a percent higher. Future lifestyle and care ratings are amongst the others, which uh, could 
uh, when we had a very good day yesterday. Let's see what happens to these stocks in the session today. And of course, watch out for all the PSU banks, BOB, Canada, Bank of India. They had a fabulous move in trade yesterday. Let's see what happens. The currency has started at 64.92. So there's a visible strengthening in the currency. Okay, 64.99 now. So slightly all over the place. Around the 65 odd mark is the rupee vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. The bond yield should come up on your screen as well. Yesterday about 7.19 or 7.20. The yields, uh, let's see what they are doing right now. 7.14, some uh, pies, I mean, but a, but a couple of pies kind of a strengthening in the 10 year yield as well. So it continues to find favor. Uh, the bonds continue to find favor, is what I mean. Okay, 902, let's get in Somit Sarkar, who joins in with the big brokerage calls for the morning. Somit, good morning. Good morning, Neeraj. On the big brokerage calls for the day, first we have is Geojit on Avenue Supermass. Now, the brokerage has initiated coverage on the stock with a buy rating and a target price of 1590 Now, according to the brokerage, Demart is the most profitable value retailer in India and mall additions and everyday discount strategy have worked in favor of the company and helped the company deliver strong growth. Now, the brokerage says that the EBITDA margin of the company is higher compared to peers on the back of its better asset turnover and lean cost structure. It also says that the change in strategy by including lease stores along with its own stores will boost growth for the company going forward. Now, the, the brokerage is expecting the company's revenue and net profit to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 34% and 43% over FY18 to 20 on the back of store additions, change in strategy, e-commerce, debt reductions and tailwinds from GST. Lastly, it says that the stock will trade at a higher premium when compared to its peers over the medium term. Second, we have a CLSA on Sri Simon. Now, the brokerage has raised the rating on the stock to buy from outperform and have cut the target price to 20,100 from 22,000. Now, according to the brokerage, the, the volume growth is expected to accelerate to 15% annually over the next two years as the new capacities come on stream. Now, it also says that the sharp rise in energy cost is a concern, but the hike in cement prices should take care of that for the company. Now, it is expecting the company's EBITDA to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 25% over FY18 to FY20. It also says that since the company has acquired UCC, the stock has corrected on capital allocation concerns and going forward any improvement in profitability of UCC will help the company gain back this uh, gain back and it also says that further investment in international business will remain an investor concern when it comes to street cement. All right, Swami, thanks a lot for bringing those big brokerage calls of the day and Shri Cement, uh, we'll talk about that to Avinash. Uh, Avinash, Shri Cement, uh, if the construction space has to do well, which a uh, lot of the analysts, you know, a lot of the market participants have been bullish on, I think the cement stock should also uh, do well. Which are the stocks would you go for large cap or mid cap in this space? No, I think clearly uh, within the cement pack, you know, uh, I would believe that, you know, the south-based companies, specifically stocks like Ramco Cements or uh, India Cements should do well. I think not only uh, are prices better there, but I think the volume expansion in the southern market is going to be much better than, you know, uh, companies which operate in the western side of the market. So I would believe that any weakness uh, should be used as an opportunity to actually look at stocks like uh, Ramco as well as uh, India Cement, where we feel that the risk reward would be much better as compared to the large cap, you know, uh, cement stocks like an Ultra Tech or maybe a Shri Cement. Although, you know, long term prospects definitely appear to be good, but in terms of the price to risk uh, reward, I think Ramco would definitely qualify better. Hmm. Interesting. Watch out, uh, Ramco Cements uh, <coughs> may qualify better than Shri Cement uh, or a couple of other names. Uh, recently, some positive uh, notes and coverage came in on Ramco Cements as well. What else is flying out? Den Networks looks like it'll start off on a good note about 5.5% higher. Built about 5% higher, Adani Enterprises about 4% higher. Remember, I, re I remember reading news about how Adani Enterprises will has bagged an order from NHAI as well. So that's interesting. And Soba Limited likely to start off on a positive note, 4% higher on the back of those numbers. In fact, it's revving up some interest in the other real estate names as well. DB Realty, Brigade Enterprises, both of them are starting off on a, or looking to start off on a fairly decent note. Devin Choksi of KR Choksi Securities joins us right now on the show as well with his thoughts. Uh, Devin, good morning. Thank you so much for taking the time out. I know it's a bit of a last minute request, but thanks so much for accommodating this. Um, Devin, uh, just this frenzy in, of short covering in banks yesterday, are you looking to add to banks, looking at the RBI's uh, forecast of inflation? Doesn't seem like there'll be a hike in a hurry. Is that a good enough reason to start looking at PSU banks or corporate facing private banks? Uh, good morning, Neeraj. 
Well, I'm not totally surprised to see the kind of a bounce back or a recovery which has happened in the counter, maybe led by the short covering for any reasons. Uh, these stocks have uh, significantly gone down under and that's the reason for which I think the technical bounce or the recovery or the short covering led recovery is distinctly possible. Not now but in future also I think this is likely to be the situation. However, I think that doesn't change any of the fundamental aspects of this particular banks or the business of the banks. What I'm observing is that I think their existing business continues. But I think for uh, the new business that they want to add into the portfolio is something which I think one is uh, definitely worried about. Where on the other side, the corporate banks or private sector banks which are basically uh, uh, moving in the direction of 25% plus kind of a credit growth, the PSB is typically I think stays uh, I think in sub 10% kind of a credit growth which is what is not comfort uh, providing kind of a situation. And that's the reason for which I think one is not very gungo about buying uh, the PSBs even at a valuation which are sharply corrected currently. Maybe those who are traders they would seek the opportunity in buying some of the short sold counters and probably take position and make money in the short duration. But for the long term investor I think still the situation is not completely clearing. And my own take is that I think in PSB's case, I think till the time government provides some kind of a structural changes in the business of PSBs, including allowing the management, uh, professional management to take the reins and allow them to I think continue the business for a few years before changing them. I think till that point of time if these changes are happening, I think one is not going to get a complete confidence to buy investments in PSB for a long term. Short term may be a different issue. Devin, what about the NBFCs then, considering the bond yields have cooled off from the highs that we've seen during this year? Uh, now the cost of funding may not be that much of a concern when the bond yields touch those levels of 7.7. .7. But with that coming off, would you look at NBFCs? Yes, I think we have been selectively uh, uh, into the NBFCs and uh, the areas where we are more comfortable uh, are housing finance companies in the NBFC space and couple of consumer finance companies which you are having the retail book uh, likes of Bajaj Finance or Capital First kind of a companies. They are relatively looking more stable uh, uh, in the NBFC space. So we are selective, we are paying the premium for some of the quality NBFC companies but at the same time we believe that I think they have the ability to produce growth in excess of 25 to 30 percent on a CAGR basis over next three to five years, uh, even on a larger size book that they are holding currently. So certainly I think the confidence level remains relatively higher onto some of the names in the housing finance and consumer finance NBFCs. Okay, minutes away from market open, let's tell you all that you need to know to stay ahead in trade today. GM Breweries post strong quarter four numbers, issues dividend and bonus. The stock starting off four and a half percent higher. Interglobe Aviation not to bid for Air India under the current divestment plan. Brokerages chair the move. Soba says quarter four FI18 new sales volumes rise 40 percent. New sales value up 30 percent. Brokerages give a thumbs up. The stock starting off a whopping eight percent higher in trade. HCL Technologies acquires life sciences and consumer services provider C31 Solutions. The acquisition complements its BPO services, says Morgan Stanley. One more brokerage bullish on Avenue Supermarts. Geojit sees price target of 15.90 rupees per share for the retailer. And the following stocks will now have 20% circuit limit. IFP Agro Industries, DB Realty, Rain Industries, Waterbase and Venkis. Well, some of them likely to start off on a good note as well. Um, well, the markets by and large seem to be starting off on a flattish note. Uh, Nifty flat, Nifty bank flat. Remember Raja Venkatramani earlier told us about how he would look to initiate longs on the Nifty bank at the current level. Srikant, we haven't taken your index call for the day. What would you be doing today when the index is likely to start off flat? Are you initiating any trades? I think see one more uh, trending day is not ruled out. The way yesterday short covering has happened and uh, the way today also the market is discounting to all uh, negative news flow. I'm of the view that if there is any correction, it will be an opportunity for short term trader to uh, create some long position. But even at this price also, I think we should look for adding some long positions because 10,270 acted as a very good uh, resistance in the uh, current up move. Now 10,270 should act as a very good support. So that we can keep as a stop loss and we can uh, create long positions for the target of 10,420, 430 on the higher side. 
Uh, we also like Bank Nifty because the stock has formed, uh, Bank Nifty has formed inverted head and shoulder and it is heading for 25,300. Uh, here also the stop loss uh, should be very close to uh, 24,600 levels. Mm. Okay, interesting. Raja, you already mentioned that you would go along on the Nifty Bank. Are right. you choosing that trade or are you choosing an individual bank? Oh, Bank Nifty uh, in, the, in the month of March, it had already made a bullish engulfing uh, on the decline. And uh, post that, uh, it's a good, strong technical setup. And after that, it has been moving in a channel formation. And yesterday's uh, positive news actually resulted in a very strong breakout. And if the market is going to open flat, and uh, it looks like it is uh, actually negating the global markets. So if there were participation today, I would actually be going uh, bank nifty maybe 15 minutes post the open. Okay. So we'll, we'll take the view about 10 or 12 minutes post open as well, Raja, yeah. from you about whether you're going ahead with that or no. Sure. Uh, Soba likely to start off as the biggest gainer. Ravinash, a quick view here. Soba, 8% higher. The good, good news, yes. Good enough to buy after an 8% move because it's likely to start off 8% higher. No, I think looking at the kind of, uh, you know, volume commentary which we got yesterday, I think uh, this kind of move looks to be justified, Neeraj. And I think clearly you could see a lot of stock-specific, uh, you know, uh, company-related uh, uh, positive surprises here. And I think to that extent, you know, this upsurge will definitely be justified. I think now the market should be looking at a stronger set of Q4 numbers, which I think hopefully if they are better, then I think you could see this move continuing for a long time. Okay, that's a call coming in on Soba, but let's get you top trading idea then. Shrikan, I'll come to you after the pre-opening rates. Anything else that's popping up on your screen? I think uh, Infosys looks good. Uh, it is around 11.45, 11.50. It is forming some bullish formation and it is heading for 12.20. So it's a great risk reward ratio for short term traders. Uh, we should look for adding Infosys to our uh, trading portfolio. Okay, Raja, quickly, uh, your top call would be? Yeah, Kodak Bank. Kotak Bank. Yeah. Okay. okay, so two large caps again today. Yesterday also our experts had given two large cap stocks for a buy. Boy, they would have made money. But in today's session, uh, it's Infosys from Shrikant Chauhan, which is his top call. And I and I, I think Kotak Bank from Raja, which is his top call for the day. So let's wa wait and watch as to what those stocks do in the session today. And watch out for the PSU banks individually. But Soba clearly seems to be the man of the match. In addition to maybe GM Breweries, which also looks to start off on a good note. But here are the rates this Friday morning. Flattish start for the Nifty Sensex, the Nifty Bank too. So all in all, not a big move, but not a big cut uh, as well. The Dow futures are weak. We're not reacting too much to that as of now. Let's wait and watch. The mid caps and the small caps, a fairly decent move yesterday. The market breadth was positive. For now, very, very flat. The doubt that the Nifty heat map will really show big moves either direction. But let's bring up the heat map. Even Stevens, uh, Hindalco, Vedanta, Tata Steel. So the commodity names look like they've come off in early morning trade right now. What's gaining? Not too many gainers. IOC has some gains to itself. So all marketing companies, BPCL2 out there. HCL take about a percent higher. HPCL marginally higher. But the heavyweights seem to be missing. Uh, except for HDFC, which is about a half a percent gain. Don't see too many heavyweights on the gaining side. Uh, save for LNT, which is down about a percent. Don't see too many heavyweights on the losing side as well. So the heavies are somewhere in between. But it's even Stevens for the index. Uh, let's get in some individual names. Uh, uh, which could be reacting to news or have been moving around in the session today. Some of the top movers and gainers of trade yesterday. So the first, the, uh, the stocks which gained the most yesterday include a VIP, Future Life and Care ratings. They are all starting off very, very flat. In fact, Future Life is down about a percent uh, and, and, and a half. VIP about a percent and a half higher. PSU banks had a fabulous move yesterday. Let's see if they are doing an encore. The BOBs, CAN banks, BOIs, no, not really. No big moves here. So let's get the newsmakers up and about. Uh, Interglobe Aviation, GM Breweries. Interglobe Aviation, about a percent and a half higher. Now, again, um, it could be uh, you know, too soon to call that it's happening because it's not buying Air India. It's a stock that's had a really good run, maybe a bit of a pullback. It's not buying Air India. Brokerages have a mixed view here. Uh, and then, last but not the least, GM Breweries, uh, which, uh, well, not really starting off in a big way, just about 2.5% higher. Namneet, we thought GM could well turn out to be the stock of the day. Turns out, Soba seems to be like it. 
Definitely, Neeraj. In fact, uh, look, talking about the broader markets, it's a flat opening there. No major cuts seen. So let's just pull up the Nifty Midcap Index first and see what's that doing. Uh, uh, it's just about down nearly 35 points at the moment. And I also want to pull up India VIX, which was down nearly 10% in yesterday's session. That's seen some further cool off in the opening trade, at least. The India Volatility Index will just come up on your screen. Okay, it's turned green. It's up nearly half a percent. In terms of stock-specific pull up Soba, as Neeraj was highlighting, the sales volume for the fourth quarter quarter are up 40 percent and clearly this looks like to be the newsmaker of the day. Soba is up about uh, 7 percent. Magma Fincorp is in focus uh, on back of its uh, 500 crore QIP which is opening today and the floor price has been set at about 155 rupees which is almost 6 percent to yesterday's closing price and hence uh, the 6 percent cut you're seeing uh, on Magma Fincorp. The other one is Sona Koyo where promoters are looking to uh, sell almost 1.8 percent stake via offer for sale. That's down 7 percent in the reason reason for the same is the floor price has been set at 85 and why the promoters are selling because the share the total promoter shareholding is about 77.3 so they have to reach that limit of about 77 as set 75 percent as said by Sebi. The other one is Trident Infra. Uh, which is one in order for 130 crore uh, in Singapore. Let's see what that's one doing. Okay, that's our 4%, so reacting positively to that news. A uh, couple of yesterday's gain is full of smart link. That was locked in upper circuit with gains of 20%. The board will be meeting on Saturday. Uh, on, uh, to consider some bonus and on back of which uh, uh, buyback, pardon me, not bonus, the stock was up 20%. Today also it's opening with gains of 35 And D-Link is the other one which was up 15 to 16% yesterday, seeing some bit of profit booking. That's down almost 3.5% in trade. Yeah, well, interesting. I, I don't see too many stocks which are knocking on the doors of the new highs, uh, but it's a very, very flat start to the trading day today. Um, Soba clearly standing out as one big uh, winner in the session. Um, Devin Choksi, uh, Soba developers, it's also revving up uh, the other real estate names along with it. Brigade Enterprises, for example, 2 25 percent higher, some of the others as well. I mean, are you betting on real estate? And if so, are you betting on the tried and tested Oberoi, Godred, Soba developers' names? Or are you looking somewhere else within that pocket? Well, uh, we are not uh, fully buying into these companies as of now still, though we believe that I think most of these companies have actually the names which you mentioned, particularly the asset light model businesses that they are following. They are the ones who have got a relatively better amount of uh, execution abilities and at the same time I think they are having some of these sizable projects to execute also. So from a pure perspective of execution, I think these companies uh, are looking definitely good. Uh, the volume of business that they are generating on a year-over-year -year basis and the visibility that is getting created, I think this is definitely getting, uh, giving good uh, kind of a confidence. However, we are still not fully buying into uh, some of these companies largely because of A, the factor of valuation which has scaled up probably ahead of time. There are definitely shortage of players as far as I think this kind of ability, uh, execution ability that the companies used to possess, there are short of players at this point of time, so they command premium. Uh, we believe that I think uh, one will have to keep a close eye on them and probably selectively buy into I think one or two companies where the larger amount of clarity, uh, particularly I think for the balance sheet that they are managing, I think is there. So uh, we'll definitely I think look at, but as of now, no, I think we are not adding into the portfolio for the time being. Okay, I think Prestige Estates is also doing well in today's session. And besides that, remember there were a couple of stocks where uh, the circuit limit has been revised to 20% and one of them being IFP Agro, that's doing pretty well. Not only in today's session, today it's up 10.5%, but for the week as well, the counter has gained over 30%. So clearly one of the outperformers of 2018, Avinash, IFP Agro. Uh, do you track what's going right here? I think uh, in terms of the numbers, uh, Navneet, I think they have a large exposure on the consumer durable space and I think clearly we have seen uh, very strong tractions coming in here. Hopefully, you know, now with the demonetization and the GST impact getting more or less neutralized, uh, I think we would definitely see a stronger set of numbers, not only in the quarter four, but uh, looking at the kind of new product launches and the kind of operating uh, levels of efficiency the company has managed to deliver till now, we could see a better FY19. So I think clearly, you know, there has been some preemptive buying before the quarterly numbers, and I think FY19 should be a lot better as compared to last year. Interesting. IFP Agro, 
up about 12 watt percent raja you want to take a look at the charts of both of these names uh, ifb if you look at it but soba in particular the one that i was asking devin about okay um, soba if you see uh, since bottoming out in uh, 2016 the run till uh, last year was pretty good and now the recent pullback uh, which we have seen has uh, actually uh, come to a good uh, trend line support and mm -hmm. out there it has made a nice uh, twist of bottom and from there the pullback is also seen so <coughs> you can say that the prices have already started acting ahead of the news and now with positive news flows also kicking in you could see that it could uh, retest the previous high around uh, 700 700 you could yeah. see it retesting okay yeah. you track ifb agro by any chance i could pull up the chart for you once again okay. no rush no mind maybe ask Shri shrikant about it uh, uh, if he tracks uh, shrikant any thoughts on ifb agro or soba if you track it see ifb agro was like uh, uh into mm, very strong up trend but uh, later on because of some reason or maybe fall in the market the stock has fallen all the way from 900 to uh, 550 560 now it is trading at 750 again so very clearly it's a very strong formation and it is going to uh, move further it has retested to its breakout level so i'm of the view that again 900 is uh, seems achievable but yes buying is advisable on delivery basis okay that's a view coming in that's a technical view rather on ifp agro uh, these liquor stocks are doing well so pull up united spirits uh, united breweries both of them are seeing some positive tick and uh, united spirits is actually up now 2 to 2 and a half percent in trade gm breweries numbers were pretty good so probably that's setting the tone for the entire space the vein in the liquor space uh, we had gm breweries coming out with stellar set of numbers and uh, uh, some bit of gains also seen for united spirits and united breweries i remember there was a bit of one off that was seen in the third quarter after a stellar, stellar set of numbers which were posted in second quarter uh, some of the states had gone ahead and increased prices i guess that was working pretty well and the other theme of premiumization is there anything in the liquor space that is looking good according to valuations a uh, wrong person to ask the question doesn't understand enough about the liquor business honestly so excuse me for not answering this question okay no problem devin uh, i mean ashish we're talking about united spirits if somebody wants to make a fresh investment what what should be the target what's the risk reward ratio that one can look at because the stock i think has already done well in the last 6 months no i think these are uh, typically you know consumption themes and i think over the next say 2 to 3 years now if one were to take a call on the consumption theme then i think uh, you cannot ignore liquor stocks i would believe that as i mentioned you earlier that you know uh, branded players especially in the upper end are definitely expected to do well in terms of the opportunity as well as the kind of margins which these companies enjoy and obviously united spirits uh, categorizes as a well positioned player you know a older player operating in the middle and the upper end of the markets so clearly from a longer term perspective united spirits on any decline should be used as an opportunity to actually look at it as a portfolio stock and i think stocks like gm breweries operate in a niche market i think clearly uh, with 11 12% top line growth if a company can deliver 100% growth in operational ebitda i think the market would obviously look at how long this uh, you know performance could be sustained because now the base is small but nevertheless they operate in a very niche market and where margins will continue to be high so it should be a mix of both the lower end as well as the upper end if one were to look at uh, an exposure in the liquor market devin before we thank you um, are you looking at the gas plays the gas distribution plays the likes of igl mgl etc and are they good pockets to invest into currently well i think i'm not doubting the uh, rate of growth of around 15 to 20 percent in most of these uh, gcd companies uh, and that is where i think one could possibly buy the comfort level that they would be steadily growing between 15 to 20 percent beyond that i don't think that there is any dramatic or uh, big upside i think that one can talk about so certainly i think the opportunities elsewhere probably are suggesting slightly non linear growth opportunities so we are more focusing on that side vis a vis a typical commoditized business uh, with around 15 20% kind of a growth okay devin joksi much appreciate you taking the time out and joining us this morning on bumba quint uh, thanks uh, for yeah. being with us today well that's the view from devin joksi um avinash if i can ask you about uh, Uh, you know pockets <laughs> that people can invest in you know uh, two days before or yesterday 
like uh, North America Class A truck sales came and I recollected re re about your call on Bharat Forge. Yeah. Uh, do you like this pocket? There is Bharat Forge, Ramkrishna Forgings, I think, GNA Axles amongst those stocks. Yeah. Do you like them even now? Yeah, I think clearly in terms of the you know the risk reward, I would believe that you know GNA Axles looks definitely well positioned. I think if you look at the exposure of this company on the Class A trucks, roughly about 25 to 30 percent comes from the North American markets. And I think the management uh, has clearly outlined that uh, they are looking at a top line growth of 25 to 30 percent and with good amount of margin expansion possible. And uh, hopefully, you know, the tractor and the commercial vehicle segments in the domestic side have also been doing pretty well. So I think in terms of the operational efficiency and in terms of the earnings growth, Neeraj, you could possibly see a 20, 30 percent growth in the, uh, you know, on the bottom line for GNA axles and that could possibly re-rate the stock further. Our sense is that if you look at the valuations of both Bharat Forge and Ramkrishna Forgings, probably they are slightly uh, pricey and have gone up, but GNA Axel presents a good opportunity for a further re-rating potential even from the current levels. Okay, we'll watch out for that. Uh, Shrikant, uh, final question to you. As uh, first 15 minutes of trade almost come to a close, uh, key observations, any trades that you are initiating now or any, any follow-ups to the trades that you've already given? Uh, Neeraj, I think see, uh, pharma stocks are doing well. Lupin, on which we have given buy call, is uh, is on the uh, uh, breakout side. But uh, what I'm observing is that all these uh, top brand companies like Jubilant, Bata, or uh, some of the others companies, they are like uh, doing really well today. And uh, Jubilant Food looks really good. Uh, currently, it is around 23.50. I think the stock has spent uh, seven, uh, four, five days uh, in this particular range. Now again, it is heading for the levels of uh, maybe 24.40, 24.50 on the high side. So it's a buy at this price with a stop loss at 2,300. And we also like uh, McDoubles on which we discussed. I think the stock has formed double bottom and it is again heading for the levels of 3550 or maybe 3600. Uh, the stock is also on the, uh, means uh, the news flow is also there for the stock of stock split in the in next 10-12 uh, days. So it's a, a great buy even at this price and if there is any correction, certainly one should look for adding McDoubles to their trading portfolio. Okay. Uh, that's a call coming in on United Spirits. STC India has gone up. That's up nearly 12 to 13 percent. And IFP Agro is now up almost 18 percent. What else among the FNO securities is uh, Ada Mine Tree is the one, and obviously Adani Enterprise is also up uh, almost 4 percent in trade. Raja, on the charts, Mine Tree at 8:30. Uh, does it warrant any long position? Yeah, um, uh, Mine Tree is definitely heading to a new high, and uh, there's definitely no signs of reversal here. And uh, it's also holding the trendline support and forming a nice bullish candle. So one should actually be initiating longs even at this level. But the caveat here is that the market is more of an intraday play. So one should always trade with an intraday purview till the entire scenario is cleared. But yes, the view is positive. It's basically don't take any position home. It's weekend. Overnight, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, well, that too. And the Dow futures, as we stated, are not looking all that great. Uh, last question, Raja. Adani yeah. Enterprises, 3.5% higher. Have you look at the charts here? Yeah, Adani Enterprises uh, gave a strong revival yesterday. And uh, subsequent to that, uh, now we are witnessing some upward tick. So one should actually be looking to initiate it with a monetary stop loss. Because technical stop losses are uh, around 130 levels, which is not uh, warranted. Okay, so maybe four or five rupees below the current level. Yeah, below. Okay, but intraday again. Yeah. You wouldn't take a position yeah, if yeah. you don't Adani Today I strongly advocate uh, intraday play. Okay, strongly advocating trade play. Fair call. Um, Avinash, last question. Uh, any of the Adani Group stocks, uh, they made a bit of a comeback. Adani Ports had gone down all the way to 350, 340 odd, now it's yeah. 382. Adani Enterprises, it won a road contract as well, transmission. Anything that you like here? I think uh, within the uh, Adani group, I think Adani ports and Adani transmission, I think these are companies which possibly uh, have a very strong business model and I think uh, Adani ports could be looked upon, you know, from a slightly longer term kind of angle, although, you know, valuations may not look very uh, cheap as of now, but if you look at the next two years, I think the kind of opportunity we are uh, looking at the port and the logistics space, I think we could possibly look at buying the stock on a decline. Uh, Adani uh, uh, transmission is a new play. Uh, we are going to see a lot of top line traction you know after uh, the kind of uh, you know infra business which they bought from Reliance Infra so I would believe that you know here these uh, two companies could possibly see a very strong earnings traction provided you know the horizon is slightly medium to long term. Mm. Okay um, Avinash as well as Raja many thanks for joining in today and giving us your thoughts. Uh, Thank you. Shrikant Chauhan uh, 
you know, one final question to you uh, from my end, and maybe you have a call than that. But I was just looking at the broader end of the spectrum. Uh, there is some activity that we've recently seen in some of these distribution companies, the DEN networks, the Hathaway cables of the world. If you look at the monthly charts, you will see flashes of uh, brilliance out there. Uh, is it possible to figure out if there is a trade on any of these names? See, Dane is uh, certainly looking good because uh, if you see the overall pattern of it, then a lot of block deals we witnessed in the company. Yesterday also there was some block deal or some uh, uh, buying from the institution. Uh, yes, definitely the stock has uh, made a double bottom and today the stock is up by almost 109, sorry, is up by 104-5% from the lowest low of 85. So at this price, certainly for traders, it's not a right strategy to take some long call. But if there's a medium term view, then I think this stock is definitely going to do well. It is heading for 145. Currently, it is at 110. Buying is advisable between this 110 and 100 levels. Keep a stop loss at 95. I think the trade should do well. OK, um, Shrikant, leave it at that. Many thanks for joining in today and giving us your thoughts. So those are a set of stocks uh, that look interesting from a trade or an investment perspective. I think the advice that came in was for some of the gas companies today and for some of the auto comp companies which benefit from the North American Class A truck sales, the likes of GNA Axles. What we'll do is take a break now. Up next, get a very special market voice. Uh, Mihir Vora of Max Life Insurance will be joining in to talk about his thoughts and what is he doing in a scenario like this. And post that, we'll talk to Dixon Technologies, which may benefit from some customs and import duty changes. The managing director, Atul Lal, will be joining in.